Formed in 1899, the Launceston City and Suburbs Improvement Association set out to construct an access along the Cataract Gorge. Entering the gorge, we immediately found ourselves walking out onto a spacious green lawn in the middle of which was a swimming pool. The lake appeared so calm and peaceful on this overcast morning. At the top of the lake, our attention was directed to the suspension bridge, a short distance away. We set out on the path at the side of the cliff face, which led to the head of the first basin and to the suspension bridge. Rock anchors held fast the cables that tied the bridge to the cliff face. This bridge was constructed across the Esk River in 1940. The earliest recorded visit to this area was made in 1804 by a settler named William Collins, who was particularly impressed when he saw the beauty of the river and the gorge. This day, the river entering the basin was flowing steadily. We could only imagine what it would look like when in full flood. The opposite bank of the basin contrasted with the previous bank in that here was a Victorian garden of wilderness created with a variety of ferns and exotic plants. We spent quite a while here admiring the scenery from ground level while others enjoyed the view from the chairlift above. Built in 1972, the central span of the lift is 308 metres and believed to be the longest single chair lift span in the world. From our vantage point on the opposite bank of the basin, we were impressed by the beauty of the area. The gorge is steeped in geological history. It seems millions of years ago, violent earthquakes and the process of erosion caused the Esk River to widen and deepen the gorge. Some young ducks were happily catching insects in the basin as we walked across the small footbridge at the northern end of the pool where the water was seen flowing out to the Tamar River. Leaving the gorge we drove to the city park just a few blocks away. While Judy and Lydia prepared our lunch I spotted a train, obviously waiting to give children rides around the park. As we sat enjoying our sandwiches, we noticed a rather prominent building close by, which turned out to be the John Hart Conservatory. By now, more people had gathered in the park and the little train was starting to do a thriving business to the delight of the children. Our picnic lunch soon attracted the local seagulls and with our attention momentary taken up with the activity of the train, we almost lost our lunch. Not you. No. <laughs> no. No sooner had we finished lunch when the mower came past to trim the edge of the nearby lawn.
This city park is central to the cultural life of Launceston and consists of 13 hectares of beautiful Victorian gardens. Many of the great pine trees with their huge pine cones attracted our attention. An elaborate structure caught our attention and on further investigation we found it to be the Queen Victoria Memorial Fountain erected in 1897 and cast by the Scottish firm of Macfarlane's, famous for their ironworks of this class. Just to the side of the pathway, a colourful bed of flowers caught our eye as we headed over to photograph the macaque monkeys. Launceston City Park was known as the People's Park. It was originally developed by the Launceston Horticultural Society and handed to the City Council in 1863. The colony of Japanese macaque monkeys have been in the park ever since they arrived from Japan 20 years ago. Then it was a visit to the John Hart Conservatory before leaving the park. Situated on the Latrobe Inlet of the Mersey River, we came across a pleasant area named Bell's Parade, named after Robert Bell, who with his half-brother constructed a wharf and store here in 1885. For a period in the 1880s, this spot was the main port on the river. Old English trees add to the natural splendour of the river and the beauty of this place. Nearby is Sherwood Hall, believed to be the oldest house in La Trobe, built between 1848 and 1850 by Thomas Johnson, who began life in Van Diemen's Land as a convict and married Dolly Dalrymple Briggs, the first part Aboriginal. The original building was damaged in a major flood in 1970 and later restored and relocated at Bell's Parade after 1991. Tasmanian history is beautifully captured here in the magnificent sculptures by Tasmanian artist Stephen Walker. The area here is known as Settler's Wharf. The sculptures tell the story and hardships experienced by the early settlers and depict many images of the fauna that lived in this place. Nearby is the site of the Axman's Hall of Fame and Timberworks. The first World Wood Chopping Championship was held here back in 1891. The main building is supported on columns of tree trunks of various timber types. A sample of each is set out on the tree trunks to show the colour and grain of the wood. <laughs> Further inside the building, displays of the harvesting and milling used by the early pioneers are on display. Champion axemen of the past together with their amazing feats, 
are immortalised in the many showcases at the rear of the building holding much of the memorabilia. The Foster family in particular were exceedingly prominent during part of this era. When we had finished our look at the history of this amazing place, we drove through La Trobe to visit the Anvers Chocolate Factory, the subject of another short video.